So in our last tutorial, we identified the value drivers that are the value drivers, the financial statement items that don't need value drivers. In this tutorial, we're going to look at ones that can appropriately be forecasted as some percentage of sales, right? The easiest one in my mind to visualize or to think about is this one, direct costs. It makes sense intuitively for most students to think of a lemonade stand example, right? You know that if you charge a dollar for lemonade, you can break it down and say, well, you know, 48 cents of that goes to my costs of goods sold, right? Or whatever it costs you to produce that lemonade. And that's a pretty direct ratio that makes sense. In Hershey's experience, or in Hershey's last five years, their cost of goods sold has gone between 51% and 58% for an average value of 54%. Before you use it as your driver and say, oh yes, I'll use the average, eyeball it. Well, if the highest value or the lowest value is the most distant value, and then there's some sort of trend, you might want to use the average. In this case, Hershey's cost of goods sold seems to be falling, right? There, it's taking them 51 cents, 51 cents of every dollar earned to pay for direct costs, where in the past it was 58. So 54.33, you know, maybe that's correct. Um, or we might want to guess, at least when I look at this, I'm going to guess 52%, right? And you are welcome to change any of your drivers if you think the average doesn't make sense. All I want you to do is in the next column over, make a little note. Used 52% because I thought the average was too high, right? There seems to be a downward trend. Great, and then I'll look at that and I'll say, hey, you know, I agree. If it's something that I don't agree on or I think that's a bad call, I'll let you know. But when it comes to choosing your value drivers, whatever you can justify is the one you should use. The next one that we use as a percentage of sales is selling general and administrative, right? For every dollar of sales, this number here means it is taken on average 24 cents, just under 25 cents. I could use that average, but again, Hershey's is a good example of something, you know, maybe they've got an increasing trend, 23, 25, 24, 26, 27, you know, is 25 reasonable? You know, it might be. Uh, I could say that I think it's going to be something like 26%. I could estimate on the high side, um, but I'm just going to use the average. And if you have a trend like that, that can be your call. Restriction, remediation, and impairment. Mm, is there a pattern there? No. Let's just use the average. You may have some other items. Um, interest expense and interest income, those are going to be forecasted not as a percentage of sales, rather they're a function of debt and cash. So we're going to need to forecast them as a function of debt and cash. Taxation, income tax expense, is not a function of sales. Instead, it's a function of taxable income, right? We looked at that when we calculated our tax rate for our weighted average cost of capital. So that's it for the income statement, right? Those few things, in this case, we've got four things that are percentage of sales. That's pretty easy. Scrolling down to the balance sheet, receivables, that's a percentage of sales. Inventories, we're going to forecast that as a percentage of sales. Other current assets, let's forecast that as a percentage of sales, right? Inventories is an easy one to imagine. Um, you know, in order to make a dollar in sales, you need to have about nine cents worth of inventory sitting in the store. Net property, plant, and equipment, we're going to forecast that as a percentage of sales. Not gross, right? Not plant, property, and equipment at cost, but net. We'll give intangibles. I'll give other, all of those things in the absence of a major trend will get forecasted as a percentage of sales. Right, accounts payable, seems like a reasonable average. 
accrued expenses, a reasonable average, current debt, that seems reasonable. Long-term debt and leases, that seems reasonable. Oops. Black text. If you see a trend here, um, even not necessarily as a percentage of sales, but if you see a, a large trend here, say you went from 13,000 to 19,000, you might want to use a growth rate. And in that case, I'll show you how to do that when we look at sales growth. Other liabilities can be a percentage of sales. I'm sorry, that was pensions. Other liabilities, the percentage of sales. Total liabilities will be equal to the sum total of all liabilities. Common share capital. In this case, oh, I already talked about that one. Additional paid in capital. Let's call it a percentage of sales. We got it, right? Same with treasury stock. And same with, oops, I'm sorry, same with accumulated other comprehensive income and same with treasury stock. Those things will all get forecasted as a percentage of sales. Pretty handy. That's gotten us through almost all of our statements, right? The only other thing we're going to need to do is figure out how to identify a couple of these sum total items that are a little confusing. And we're going to have to figure out how to forecast sales, depreciation, our two interests, and our tax. All right, so we'll leave that to the next tutorial.